Okay, um, we're gonna post this um, presentation on the chapter hub after. Um, so you can access these email addresses here or on our website um, in case you need to get in touch with us like regarding any questions that you might have. So I think our, our Ugo, you're taking it away with Rice for Rohingya. Yeah, so um, we can jump right into it. Um, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, Rice for Rohingya, basically um, the gist of the situation, uh, like essentially what we have going on in Rohingya right now is there's a, pre there's a conflict that we've been moder moderating for um, about the last year or so. And it's recently escalated. If you guys have been checking like Gen Prev News and stuff, you guys have definitely have seen it and heard about it. And so we're gonna talk about the history of it. And then we're also gonna go into what has been happening recently. So um, the Rohingya are a Muslim minority in Burma. Um, they're stateless because the Burma people don't recognize, won't, the Burma state won't recognize their citizenship. And um, they say that they're Bangladeshi and Bangladeshi don't accept them either. Um, essentially, they're a persecuted people and um, they've been pushed into camps in the um, Rakhine state. And so basically what we're doing is we're starting campaigns and we're fundraising in order to help them. Um, recently, what's happened is um, the news and the media has recognized that what's going on is essentially um, a mass atrocity and it's essentially ethnic cleansing. Um, on August 25th, the militants from, um, from the, or sorry, on August 25th, a counter offensive started and that basically escalated the situation. And um, after that, what happened is a lot of people were like the military and the police, uh, they, they started attacking civilians, the Rohingya civilians. And the, although there's violence on both sides, a disproportionate amount has been coming from the Burmese military against the, the Rohingya. And so um, most recently, um, as of September 8th, um, at least 120,000 civilians have had to flee the, their state um, for Bangladesh, and um, over 400,000 are estimated to be trapped in Western Burma. And so essentially, all these people are refugees. Um, they're in camps and they're hungry, weak, and sick. And um, Aung San Suu Kyi is, she's the leader of Burma right now and she is a Nobel Peace Prize winner. However, she's been silently complicit in this, in that she has refused to condemn the police state. And a lot of people speculate that this is because um, the military police state is more powerful than she is. Um, they held her prisoner, they held her in prison back when she was a protester before she was in her position of power right now. And so she is complicit in these mass atrocities because she refuses to condemn anything and she is silent about the matters happening and she is also very um hesitant to let people um investigate the situation that's going on against the rohingya people harley mute okay sorry i was on mute um Okay, so basically, now that you've heard like the situation in Burma, um, we've also, um, I think, talked about this before on the last webinar, if you were here. Um, if So basically, our campaign is called Rise Rohingya. It is a campaign that we're continuing, continuing from last year, and it is a fundraising campaign. Um, basically, what we're doing is raising money for um, micro grants in on like on the ground in Burma um, by partnering with the Nexus Fund. Um, one of the main um, campaigns that we're fundraising for is a peace building like um, workshop type thing. And then there's also other like um, peace building and genocide prevention type like workshops that we're fundraising for and it'd be on the ground like support. Um, so basically there are multiple like incentives, I guess. Um, for you, for you guys to like fundraise, um, like as are listed on the 
on the slide. If you fundraise $100, you can get photos and a note from the team in Burma. If you fundraise $250, you get a bracelet from um, a region in Burma. If you um, raise $500, you get a Skype call from partners in Burma, so you get to talk one-on-one -on -one with them about the situation. And then if you raise $1,000, you get a hand-woven bag from um, the same region. And then if you raise $20,000, which is seemingly a large goal, but you would get a trip to Burma. So that would be a very amazing experience. Um, um, a few ways that you can go about this fundraising, um, one of the main ways is this, mo it's this virtual reality film called Behind the Fence um, that some of you might have seen before. It's a very short 10 minute virtual reality documentary um, that has been nominated for an Emmy. Um, it basically shows the inside of the camps um, that the Rohingya reside in and the atmosphere in Burma regarding the Muslim mi mi minority group. And um, we do have like resources that you can use um, in order to show that um, film on your campuses. And that could be like an amazing like fundraising campaign. It's like donation based or like fee based, whichever one um, you feel more comfortable by doing or think that you can do better. Um, if you have any questions, like you can definitely shoot me or Ugo an email or if you're in your chapter, Frida an email. And then um, we also have like a toolkit for you guys to um, help you like form this campaign. And it is a very amazing campaign to do. And um, it is also very like, Current, the, the current situation is very like important for us to approach. Right. Um, can I jump in for a second? I just want to give everyone a little bit more context. So um, Harleen and Ugo did a good job explaining the crisis on the ground. And you, if you follow the news, you know that the violence is intensified. Um, the thing that I always want to make clear is people want to know specifically, like, who is this partner organization? Where is the money directly going? And so I just want to explain that a bit. So. The Nexus Fund is an organization that entirely does peace building funding. So they don't actually implement any on the ground programs. They actually partner with um, communities within Burma and within the other um, countries that they work on. So they also work significantly in Nigeria and beyond, um, but places where there's an intense risk of violence and there's a you know potential to mitigate that or prevent it in some way. Um, clearly in Burma, the violence has begun. And so what Nexus Fund, you know, we've been fundraising for the last year um, to provide training for youth leaders. And there's an NGO that's name has been changed for the safety um, of the individuals running this NGO. Um, but basically there's an NGO that's going to run a youth program um, that trains um, eight or more young Rohingya individuals um, and Burmese individuals in these smaller communities to um, be active, implement peace building, um, you know, reduce conflict um, through specific um, skills and just otherwise be, you know, upstanding young leaders within their communities. We're also working um, through them to do a lot of different micro grants. So that's really what the focus of the Nexus grants were. It was like the the theory is, you know, they get proposals for 25 to 30 different grants all in the same area. And like building a youth center alone, that's, or not even building, but like implementing or running a youth center program isn't going to reduce the violence all by itself. However, they also do like anti-hate speech training. They also do, um, you know, religious leadership training. Um, they also do, um, you know, de-radicalizing training. Basically like working you know on several several different fronts all at the same time and that theory is if you're working in all of these different sectors that all contribute to the escalation of violence um, polarization um, within a community funding all of these different programs at one time can significantly reduce the risk so that's the thought behind the nexus fund um, just so you have a little bit more context so if someone were to ask you um, you know where is this actually going it would be specifically to this peace building center, um, like the training that's run for young leaders. Um, but it's also, um, yeah, it's also to this broader grant program in general. Um, another thing that I was just gonna add is the Nexus Fund actually has um, shifted some of their funding to be more direct aid work. So they are in the ground on the ground in Burma and with this recent escalation in the last two weeks, some of the funding that we have contributed, we've agreed to um, go to things like, you know, tarps for individuals who need to, like, make temporary shelter, met, like, immediate medicine for people who really need it and are in transit. So, um, you know, some of it is still going to the structural issues, but some of it is also immediate relief. So just wanted to let everyone know if you're fundraising, that's what they're using it for. Okay. Um, my computer decided to do something very weird. Um, but 
we will continue like this. Um, okay. Is this better? This is fine. Okay. Amala, do you want to take it from here about Yemen? Yeah. So the other campaign that we want to talk about on this call is the work we're doing in Yemen. So I'm just going to provide a little bit of background on the conflict. So in 2014, there was a, oh, can you go to the previous one? Sorry, yeah. In 2014, there was a Houthi insur a Shia insurgency led by the Houthis who are a rebel group there against the president who was President Hadi at the time. And they were backed by a former president of Yemen. So they had a lot of support. They're like very powerful rebels. And they managed to push him out of the country and force him to go to Saudi Arabia instead. And once he was there, and also for religious reasons, because he's facing a Shia insurgency, he gained the support of the Saudi regime, returned to Yemen, and declared that he was still president with their support. And so a civil war started that is still going on today. You have the Sunnis and Saudi Arabia supporting President Hadi, and then you have the Shia-led insurgency trying to overturn this regime. And both of these sides have been targeting civilians and committing um, war crimes. So we have 4,600 civilians who have been, been killed, 3,600 schools have been closed, and 18.8 million people are completely dependent on humanitarian aid. And just because they don't have sanitary water, they don't have, like, most people don't have water at all because of the conditions there, but 500,000 people have contracted, have contracted cholera. And just the lack of medicine and hospitals means that a lot of those people end up dying because of it, even when it's preventable. So the reason that this matters to stand and to U.S. activists overall is because Saudi Arabia, the Saudi-led coalition, is backing the Sunni government. And they're specifically using U.S. weapons when they're getting involved in Yemen. So they're using arms that they're getting through deals with President Trump, like a recent one in April, and they're using them to target civilians and commit war crimes, which means that from our perspective, the US is just as responsible for these war crimes because we know they're happening and we continue to give money to Saudi Arabia. So the goal now with Stan's advocacy and with our Yemenade stand campaign that Frida's gonna talk about is to pressure the US government to stop providing arms that are being used to target civilians. Right, so as Amla said, um, we're planning a, or are conducting a Lemonade for Yemenade um, campaign um, to raise awareness and take action to end the violence in Yemen. Um, and we have a specific um, policy ask that I'll get into in like just a minute um, that goes along with this. But basically, you host a lemonade stand for Yemen aid. And in order to get lemonade, people can call their representatives right there and say um, and like read out a script that we provide um, that relates to the policy ask. And I'll show you guys the script in a moment, or they can pay for it as if it's a donation um, to stand. And so the call in script um, right now is to co-sponsor the house concurrent resolution 81, um, which would remove the United States armed forces from unauthorized hostilities in Yemen. And um, basically, so like I said, they just, um, in order to get their cup of lemonade, they would call in um, and they would just read out this script. Um, and I actually, um, my chapter at University of Maryland held one today. Um, and these are some pictures from the event. Um, and it was really successful. We got a lot of calls. Um, but I do have some, like, obviously, as one of the first people to kind of, um, or first chapters to kind of move through this. I do have some like tips for um, if you want to host this in the future. And one of the things that was really hard um, for students to do was call the Capitol switchboard. It was, um, sometimes it wouldn't connect and it wasn't always working. Um, so be prepared to have um, like the representative for your district where your school is, um, for instance, like that, the number for his or her office specifically on hand so they can call that number directly. Um, that led to a more successful um, stand. And also having music um, would have been really great. We didn't, um, but in the future we wanted, we thought about bringing speakers to have music to like um, bring more people in. And yeah, so... I mean, it was really successful, and we're hoping to host another one, but um, these are just some pictures to show you guys um, how one would actually look like. 
Um, and you don't have to make le the lemonade yourself. We actually just bought lemonade. Like each person um, on the leadership team brought um, two or three like gallons of or like jugs of lemonade. Um, and we went through a lot of them um, and each person brought some cups. So it kind of added up to a larger amount in the end for a small like cost on our part. Um, but yeah, so it was really successful. And like I highly encourage running this campaign. I think it's fairly easy to do. Um, and doesn't take as much planning as um, some campaigns take. But with that, um, does anyone have any questions? All right. Um, if no one has any questions, um, you can always email your field organizer, um, whether you're a high school or a college student, or if you're a new chapter, you can always email me um, and I can help you get started on some of these campaigns, whether it's Rise for Rohingya or the Lemonade Stand. Um, but thank you guys for joining us um, this evening for our webinar. Um, stay um, in touch. Let us know if you have questions, like I said, and um, stay tuned for another webinar like this um maybe in a month or so and yeah um thank you guys and have a great rest of your evenings thanks everybody have a good one